talk about our emissions dropping by about 6 or 7% by the end of this year, but is it really enough? And in this series, we're going to inform you of what this new reality might look like. We're going to cut through all the jargon and the stats and speak to the experts to help explain in the clearest way what exactly is happening to the world around us and what we might be able to do to change that. And I'll be getting expert answers on why we're seeing a record-breaking number of wildfires across the world and what science can do to help contain the risks. News of the virus emerged at the start of the year, just as the planet recorded its hottest January on record. The Southern Hemisphere warmed up. It was a head-spinning start to the year. News on extreme weather was understandably drowned out by unimaginable headlines. The Queen's broadcast to the nation, Boris Johnson fighting for his life in hospital, and then the fallout from Dominic Cummings' infamous trip to Barnard Castle. And just as lockdown started to ease, it appeared emissions were bouncing back to similar levels or even rising in some instances. This worrying given the suspension of travel and industry in recent months, June saw the highest level of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and dominated the headlines. Many missed our highest recorded temperature on a flash flooding meant hundreds and thousands of people had lost their homes in South Sudan. What evidence of climate change have you seen around you? And is there anything that you want to know more about that doesn't get the attention it rightly deserves? Thank you so much to those of you who watched our first episode of Climate Crisis, Our Changing World. We have had some great response to it and so many of you have asked questions and that's what this online series is all about answering those questions clearly with our knowledge and our analysis of the science and in conversation with experts. And one question we're often asked is what is a climate emergency? What does it mean? Well, in May last year, the UK Parliament declared a national climate emergency. And in declaring a climate emergency, our government has admitted that global warming exists and agreed to take action. But what is causing the warming? What is the emergency? For that, we need to understand the heat wave in history. Parts of Brazil, Bolivia and Paraguay have been ablaze for months with the worst wildfires in decades, not only destroying the homes of thousands of endangered and unusual species, but also the livelihoods of many of them, the first to be missed in its history. Many were frustrated by this delay, and as a knee-jerk reaction, a wave of young people felt they could come together online to have the annual meeting, regardless of their location. It's been a year where many of us have lived our lives through the laptop screen on Zoom, and this meant it was an easy option for many. And closer to home, the UK government declared 2020 a year of climate action. As well as the targets for changing to electric cars, the government has pledged to reduce UK's carbon emissions to net zero, which means releasing virtually no carbon by 2050. So making small changes and tweaks can become a habit and this can all make a huge impact. Alex also has been following a story where others are hoping to make a bit more of a difference hope and also a vaccine. 2020 will be a year to remember for many of us for all the wrong reasons, but we have seen some amazing and uplifting stories throughout the pandemic and also from nature with wonderful images of earth healing and many of us reconnecting with the world around us because of course it's the only one we've got and we know it's worth protecting. And if we keep working together, it looks like it might just be possible. So if you have any questions you'd like us to answer, we'll keep you updated throughout the year ahead on climate crisis, our changing world.